Hey everybody, Michael Lofton here. I wanted to tackle the question of whether Annibal Bunini, an archbishop who had a very, very influential role in the new liturgy, the Novus Ordo Mise, whether or not Annibal Bunini was, because he was a Freemason, able to infiltrate the church's liturgy and infect it with harmful content that explains the current problems in the church today. So in other words, did Annibal Bunini infect the church's liturgy with foreign content and foreign influences and Masonic and Protestant content to the extent that now the Novus Ordo Mise or the Novus Ordo liturgy is harmful to souls. This is kind of a follow-up to the pre previous video that I did on the Society of St. Pius X, where they claimed that the Novus Ordo Mise, objectively considered, is a danger to souls. And somebody in the comment section said, well, hey, how do you deal with the issue of Annibal Bunini having such a pivotal role in the formation of the Novus Ordo? It's a great question, but I would just simply call a person to consistency. And what I mean by that is this. Let's assume for the moment that Annibal Bunini was a bad man and that he was a Freemason. Let's just go ahead and assume that. And let's even assume that he had less than pure intentions when it comes to how he advised the Holy Father when it comes to the reforms of the liturgy. Let's just go ahead and assume that for the moment. My question is this, how consistent are we if we're going to say, well, because of that, something now that has been officially promulgated by the Pope is harmful to souls. Because I'm simply going to ask, well, if you look at previous examples, you have figures like Joseph Kluitgen at the First Vatican Council, who had a significant influence in the promulgation of the teaching that the Pope is infallible. He had a significant hand in that. And yet we discovered much later some incredibly questionable aspects to Kluitgen's character. Does that mean somehow that the document issued by the First Vatican Council is now infected and we should no longer accept it? What about Father Gregory Baum, who also had a hand in influencing certain aspects of the Second Vatican Council and had a hand in writing at least one of its documents? It turns out that there's some very questionable aspects to his character that were discovered afterwards. Does that mean that we should now descend from Vatican II? What about Cyril of Alexandria at the Council of Ephesus at the Third Ecumenical Council? There are some less than Christian aspects to his character, it would seem. And yet, he had a significant influence in the decision that was adopted at the Council of Ephesus. Does that mean that we should now reject the Third Ecumenical Council because St. Cyril had some questions? questionable aspects and behaviors? Should we now go and examine every church father and every council father in the last 21 ecumenical councils and discern whether or not they were problematic in their behaviors and if somehow that may have impacted the decisions of the ecumenical councils? What do we say of figures like emperors who had a significant role in some of the ecumenical councils and their outcome but also had less than desirable behaviors and aspects and characteristics to them? Should we just now throw out all of the ecumenical councils? So if we're going to use this Annibal Bunini argument, we need to just simply be consistent and also throw out the First Vatican Council, the Second Vatican Council, Ephesus, and some of the other ecumenical councils. I also want to say, I think ultimately the problem here is, if a person says that I can't accept the Novus Ordo Mise, because it's harmful to souls. I want to charitably challenge you because I would say that does fall under what we would call a theological censor. A theological censor is whenever you deny something that ought to be maintained, and there are different levels of theological censors, some that are more grievous than others. Heresy, for example, would be more grievous than, say, something that is an error in theology, yet both are very problematic. I mention here this theological censor in relation to the safety of liturgical disciplines promulgated by the church. To deny that there is 
is safety or to say that something that has been officially promulgated by the church liturgically is harmful to souls falls under the censor of what we would call error in theology. And the opposite of that censor is what we would call theologically certain. There is this proposition that is theologically certain, and we are to maintain that proposition. And if we deny it, we have now committed an error in theology. And I want to read briefly to you from uh, here the second volume of Dogmatic Theology by Monsignor Van Noort. This is a pre-conciliar, so prior to the Second Vatican Council, theologian, Emmanuelist. And here's what he says about this very concept that the church could issue a church discipline in matters of liturgy that is harmful to souls. Here's what he says. The church's infallibility extends to the general discipline of the church. This proposition is theologically certain. And he goes on to explain that, and he also mentions that, well, perhaps some of the church's decisions could be imprudent, but that doesn't mean that they will be harmful to souls. They might not be the most timely, they could be imprudent, but they're most certainly safe to souls. And that proposition is theologically certain, which means it's accepted by all of the Catholic theological schools of thought as something that is necessarily connected to a revealed truth. In other words, this is not something that we can just throw away and dismiss, and it might even be sinful to adopt this position since it's an error in theology. And it might be even a matter of sin to adopt a position that is an error in theology. So that is significantly worth considering. So the question now is, can the church err so grievously that it allowed a Freemason to infect the liturgy to the point that it has now officially promulgated something that is harmful to souls? That's not to say that Annabelle Bunini did not have a hand in the Novus Ordo Mise, but it's to say, did he influence the liturgy to the extent that he inserted error and unsafe elements into it that are now harmful to souls? That would then be to say the church has officially allowed something unsafe into its liturgy and promulgated that in the Roman Rite which would, of course, fall under a theological censor if one were to maintain that. It's theologically certain that the church could never do that. So the question now is, do you actually believe that the Holy Spirit protects the church in its general disciplines, or do you believe that the Holy Spirit will allow the church to harm souls? That's the question. Well, I hope this video has been helpful to you. Please let me know your thoughts there in the comment section if you have any questions. Also, if you like what you see here, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And also, if you want to support me, check me out, patreon.com forward slash reason and theology. We'll see you later. God bless.